life, pain, death. Let's begin there. Within five minutes of taking a lethal sedative, Brittany Maynard was fast asleep, and all of the pain from her struggle with brain cancer suddenly erased from her face. She died another 30 minutes later, leaving this world just how she intended, surrounded by her loving husband, family, and friends. She was only 29 years old. The Oregon law gave her the option to take lethal sedative so she could pass away gently at home, surrounded by the people she loved. She decided what was the best for herself. Her family respected her decision and the state of Oregon helped her reach her aim. Brittany is only one of the many people who decided to pass away peacefully. So the legitimate question is, should a person who is terminally ill, who feels that their life is not worth living anymore due to incurable pain and loss of dignity, be given assistance in dying? Some terminally ill patients are in terrible pain and they would definitely rather end their life instead of living it in a way that they would not enjoy as they used to. As you know, the feeling of pain is always subjective. Everyone has a different pain tolerance, so what is tolerable to one person may be completely unbearable to another. Well, the most important relationship you have is with yourself. If you have health problems you don't want to deal with anymore, then no doctor, law, or government has the right to tell you to stay alive if your final decision is to die. Yes, die. We don't speak about death, or at least we don't like to. That's because we find this kind of subject a bit uncomfortable. Speaking about death in a serious way is too serious, deep, boring as well, while speaking about it in an ironic and sarcastic way is definitely too superficial. So I would question whether there is one right way to speak about death. Okay. Many people deal with terrible problems with illness that are terrible and they would definitely rather end their life instead of living it in a way that they would not enjoy as they used to. So they maybe have a way out. It is called euthanasia. The practice of euthanasia means intentionally killing a person who is suffering from incurable condition or disease to finally end their suffering. Passive euthanasia is an accepted medical practice where the patient is allowed to die. He is not given any cure that would keep him alive. Active euthanasia, on the other hand, is the taking of one's own life, which means dying by lethal injection administered by a doctor. There is also a third possibility, which is called assisted suicide, which is a lethal medication prescribed by a doctor, but that has to be self-administered by the patient. So here you can see a view of where this practice is legal in the world, okay. and specifically the situation of Europe, which is a little bit more confusing. Is this practice right? Is it ethical? I don't know, but in my opinion, life should be a matter of choice. People should have the power to control what happens to their bodies, and they should not be forced to go through intractable pain until their body finally dies. So why don't we give them the possibility to choose? 
wouldn't you want to die with the same dignity with which you had lived? Medical technology today has achieved remarkable feats in prolonging the life of human beings. And for those patients who have a realistic chance of surviving an illness or an accident, this technology is the best gift to mankind. For many people, over time, things do get better. But for many, they don't. For terminally ill patients, it is just a means of prolonging suffering. So, it's important to think that sometimes not having a choice can actually protect us from ourselves. The most important thing that a doctor should make is to do what he can to less the pain and improve the quality of a patient's life. Do no harm. This is what the Hippocratic Oath basically says. But what does it mean? Does it have an unequivocal interpretation? It could mean to not artificially keep someone alive when death is the best option. A time more harm is done by keeping someone alive against his own will. Or it could mean that doctor must not abandon his obligation to preserve human life until natural death comes. So these opposing views are difficult both to explain and understand. One of the most serious arguments against this is the religious one. Death is one of the most important things religions deal with. So it's not surprising that many faiths have strong views on euthanasia. Many people believe that only God has the right to end our life. And this belief is shared by many faiths as well as non-religious people who believe that permitting assisted suicide or euthanasia devalues life. So it's important to think that sometimes not having a choice can actually protect us from ourselves. You can't go back. That's why it's so hard to choose. I'm here today not to convince or persuade any of you, but just to make you understand that the possibility to choose is a relief that doesn't have to be the only option. But wouldn't you want to be sure that option is there if and when you decide you've had enough? Thank you.